Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't watched our last video of how we met, do so. I'm gonna link the link on top. That way you can know exactly how we met, our wonderful love story of how we met when I was 14 years old. It was love at first sight. He claims it was love at first sight. It was. But yeah, you should go watch it because it's worth watching. And yeah, well today's topic, we're gonna give you the tea of how it is when raising kids in an interracial marriage. Yes. Because it's different, very different. Weird. Weird, you got your abuelitas, you got your po, you got your yo, you got abuelito, your tios, your tias. First cousin, second cousin. Your first cousin, second cousin. Third cousin. You got all that good stuff. So we want to give you guys a tea on how it is to raise children in an interracial marriage. At least four children. Yeah, at least in our interracial marriage because I obviously am Latina and he is. Mong. Mong. So we speak different language. My kids even go through the same thing because they go over to his mom's and they don't understand what she's saying, and they go to my mom's house and they don't understand what they're saying. And then you get the you get that one child that you don't even want them to learn the language because you tried with your last two and failed. And she's <laughs> speaking both. She's speaking Hmong. She's speaking Spanish, and she's trying to adapt English. So like language is a really big thing. Like and then. Like literally, she just doesn't speak until she's like. Yeah, because she has all these languages going on. She's having, hard. she has a hard time. So like, if you're in like a relationship like where there's different language, like be ready for that because, like, it's crazy. Like my daughter, like sometimes I don't even know what she's speaking. You know, <laughs> she has like gibberish. Yeah, she has like her own language. You know, because she's struggling with Spanish, English, and Hmong, and she's just having like a really, really hard time. So. Language is a really big one um, in an interracial marriage. Like you have to, under, you have to really just think. Like, are your kids gonna learn just Hmong and then get to Spanish and then English, or what are we gonna do? And unless your family just speak all English, then that's a plus. Yeah, that's great. But in my poor mother-in-law, like she really, really wants to communicate with my children, and she can't. You know, and it's it's crazy, but hey, she finds a way. Like she loves my kids, and my kids love her too. So, and they call her Bo, and they call her uh, Grandpa Young. That's the pretty yeah, yeah. all they know. They go over and they play with some goats. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it, the way they were, we're raised, raised is too. completely different from the way I was raised. You know, my mom would never let me play with goats and chickens and all that stuff. You know. And my kids are all in. At my mom's house, their backyards like filled with pigeons, chickens, like goats. Yeah, it's so weird because in my culture, well, not in my culture, but the way I was raised, the way I was raised, my mom was like in the winter. In the winter, like she would bundle me up, had a beanie on, had a big old, uh, big old blanket on. And if you're Mexican, you know what I'm talking about, those San Marcos, you know, those big old blankets that have like <laughs> the whoop on it, you know, and they're so warm. Well, my mom was all about that. You know, I used to be covered and, and to the point that now I'm just like super sensitive. If a little bit of wind hits me, like in winter, I get sick. Yeah, like I get sick. You know what I mean? And so when I we had our, our kids, I was like, no, 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 cover them up. No, 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 put a beanie I'm on. Like, yeah, and he's all, leave them monks. be their mom. So they're, they're, they're born to be barefoot around the house or outside. Yeah. yeah. I was raised like that. I was raised barefooted. So, I mean, I, everywhere I go, I mean, playing as kids, I would be like barefoot running in the street. No sweater you know, on. No sweater on. You know what I mean? No matter what weather, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, and, and my, even my kids, Sometimes I'm like, put your shoes on. And they're like, oh no, we're I'm Hmong, so it's okay, Dad. Yeah, it's okay. they have to remind <laughs> him, like, we're not wearing shoes, we're Hmong. Well, because I'm changing soon. Yeah, and he's adapting, it's weird, and, and it's just like completely different. Yeah, and, and that goes with eating too, so. Yeah, like, the what they eat, like for instance, like my mother-in-law, she tries to give me squirrel, deer, Sometimes moves. they have moose and leaves. She even when they had a little larvas and I don't know all <laughs> this weird stuff. And she's always like, Eat and it. I'm just like, and then he does this right in front of her and he's like, try it. My mom made it, and my mother in law is well, looking at me like. My our oldest daughter, she just tried everything. But my daughter, she tries everything. Yeah. Yeah. She tries everything. Like she has a palate for mong food and yeah, she, she loves everything. it. 
not my other kids. Our other kids are like, Ew, yeah, they said, but uh, we also eat a lot of like our hands, so we don't really use much utensils. utensils. When we do, we do, you mean, but I mean, we usually eat with our hands, like yeah. with the rice, with chickens, or any other stuff. We usually use our hand and we pat it into like a little ball and then we stuck it in our mouth. Yeah, so they eat a lot with their hands and we don't. Like, we use the utensils and stuff like that. And manners. Manners, and <laughs> it's not that moms don't have manners, but they enjoy their food like with their hands and I, I adapted that from him. I love it. I eat my rice with my hand and when my mother-in-law eats like they do the same thing and it's okay you know but when my when we're out in public and my kids are trying to do that at Denny's or they're trying to do that <laughs> or they're trying to do that at weddings I'm like no you use your spoon and your pork you know so it's it's so crazy like how different our culture is like we're just so different then you go into uh, naming your kids okay like that is wild my mother-in-law has a mom name for all my kids yes. and so my kids are called what my parents call them and then they're called what we call them and then they're called call what my mother-in-law yep. calls them like my mom calls um my mom calls well my we're big on nicknames like and 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 you know that in the latin culture you have like gorda flaca huera you have all those Chanchitos. nicknames Chanchito. <laughs> you have all those like cool nicknames you know what i mean those funny nicknames and then uh, myself cool. yeah they're more insulting than anything. <laughs> so we have all those nicknames so my mom calls my my son like little long hair little rocky things like that and then from us they, they're called by their names you know lorelei emery or umi depending Bam, and then they go to my mother mother-in-law's house and they're called Binai, Zilu, Zilu Dana, Dana, Luday, huh? Luday. I can't even say that. How do you say that? Luday. Luday. Yeah. See what I mean? It's so, the same thing. Almost, almost like Dana. So all our kids have like mom names, right? So it's so crazy and uh, like it, it's, it's yeah. When it goes to my mom's side, that's, that's how my name. mom and dad yeah, call them. That's their name. I mean, and literally, that's how they call them. And they don't call them by like Lorelai or mm -hmm. or Emery or Adonai or Jude. I mean, they just call them by the mom name. Yeah, so my kids have to get used to that and get adapted to that. And it's really, really different for them. Like, and they're getting so used to that. And it's it's nice though. It's nice for them to adapt that culture, you know, because when you're in an interracial marriage, culture is everything. You want your kids to know both your culture their his culture and you know the American and to add the American culture yep. so you have like all these things that they're adapting to and it's it's different it really is so like naming them it's it's really really like it was it was a doozy because my mother-in-law was and it's not like what you want to call them it's like what my mother-in-law names them like that's their yeah, name that's, <laughs> you don't really get it you don't get to choose you know? <laughs> and i guess another thing you can say is go back we were i was mentioning the culture you want them to be part of both cultures and then so then you have like my husband they they have a lot where they do a lot of like um not not just shaman but their their culture is very um different like they do the bowing of the of, yeah. uh, where they bow for their elders elders you know, they bow for the elders Family members you know they do the whole chicken thing over the head you know where they like do like this whole like chicken thing and you're afraid you're gonna get pooped on and then there's like um um the strings where they give each other the strings and yeah. it well, yeah, I like that. My mother-in-law, every time we get sick, she makes sure we go over there and she puts strings yeah, on our hands like, and on our feet. Do it by herself and she like... Yeah. And she make each one for the kids. I have, like, and, I have, and then you end up having a collection of them on like... Your, your, your ankles, your ankles stuff like that. Two ankles, your so, two wrists. Yeah, so my kids, <laughs> my kids do that. You know, my kids, you know, they're... I really want... They, they get so much in his culture. They get used to it, and they're used to it. You know, they yeah. the, they're used to the whole chicken thing, and they're used to the whole um, bracelet thing, and they're used to all that stuff. And then we go over to my culture, where my 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 parents and them like they're really like um, they play la loteria, and then they do uh, um, los tios and las tias, and they have to go and give them all kisses on the cheek, and they have to you know do all that stuff. But opposed to his family, they don't do that. They're not really. Uh, affectionate that way yeah. so they don't have to hug their ponya but they really do 
you know what I mean and and just it's just so weird like the culture is very very different and but my kids learn we're teaching our kids to appreciate both not just mine and not just his yeah, and, and they don't find it weird they mean no. when they go to my mom's house they don't find it weird they're like they get used to it really yeah. quick to what my mom or my dad's doing and to what my fam side of family is doing and when they go to your side it's just like I don't know just I guess it's just it's, I guess the kids is a more open minded. Yeah, it as long as you introduce them to it. Because, yeah. But if you like kind of segregate them and, and like kind of like separate them from it. Yeah, you don't want to be like, oh, don't do that. Yeah, they're you not mean, gonna, like, they're not gonna learn. You know what I mean? They're not gonna appreciate their culture. So we make our kids very proud of me to be yeah. long and very proud to be Mexican. And believe it or I'm not, very proud to be American. And very proud to be American as well. My kids are extremely patriotic, so they're they're very they're learning. They're learning to be American. They're learning to be Latin and they're learning to be Hmong. Yeah. So they are learning to celebrate their Independence Day, they learn to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, and they learn to celebrate Hmong New Year. Yep. So there's another thing, Hmong New Year, like every single year, it's a big thing for yeah, Hmong. We do like family portraits. Yeah, we take there. pictures wearing the whole, my mother-in-law dresses us all. We stand there and she dresses us completely from head to toe, she dresses us, puts yeah. the hat on, puts the belts, the beads, all that good stuff. And <laughs> yeah, like we're used to it. Every year we do it, every year. And for, for, you know, American, it's it's in the New Year's on New Year's. Not for them. It's a whole month. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, what about I think what two two three weeks? Two, yeah, two three weeks, and they go all out and, yeah. and they do the whole the party. What do you call it? The uh, no pecho. No. What do you call it's it? like you welcome the New Year. Yeah, and they like do that. that, and it's really nice. Opposed to us, we just celebrate Americans. We celebrate it New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. That's it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm Mexican too, like we don't do nothing big, well at least we don't, and it's just simple like that. But they do like big things, so my kids know, Hmong New Year, guess what buddy, you're gonna wear your Hmong clothes whether you like yep. it or not. And they do, and they wear it proudly, and... It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice. nice. take pictures in it, we walk around, Yeah. and then we buy food, and then we buy like little knickknacks. Yeah, and, and it's really nice, you know, because my kids are adapting to both. They're adapting to the food, they're adapting to the language, they adapt to the culture. And it's all because we basically kind of just encourage them, encourage because them to do that, to, you know? Yeah. To enjoy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we also got um, funerals, which is different. Oh, yeah. their funerals are insane. Okay, so my kids, we, wait, my kids, like, it's so crazy because, you know, they say do not take, I didn't know that you're not supposed to take kids <laughs> funerals, you know? I don't know, they have to be extra careful because... Well, yeah, you can't trip at funerals. Because they say if you trip at funerals, that a <laughs> demon's gonna come and get no, you at night. Yeah, you come get your soul. So I didn't know that, right? So I took my son and my kids to the funeral that we had for his but grandma. It's just like old folks yeah, still, I guess. Yeah, and my kids tripped and everybody's like... <gasps> <laughs> and they stopped and they took my son and my daughter to a room and they started doing like this crazy stuff over them like they put out what they do like I don't know <laughs> so wild and my mother-in-law's like don't bring them anymore don't let them trip because that's dangerous or stuff like that and so our funeral cute. was like three day long so yeah so it was, I, I, it was it, nice it though. was uh, nice I, really I, I appreciate their funeral as opposed to and and it's in opposed to our funerals where it's just like wham bam thank you ma'am like it's over it's over like you you do the funeral you mourn and that's it there's just like a whole three day thing so my kids are like getting hauled back and forth back and forth for three days and but they got used to it and they had to get used to it and it's it's different a lot of food involved you know what I mean yeah a lot of support and you get time to mourn like yeah. literally and then. And then still you get to do more bowing. Yeah, and they do more <laughs> bowing. I was all pregnant the, and I was the, doing the yeah. bowing. I remember. Sons and daughters, in-laws. They all have to yeah. do it. We all and have we to. And we have do. headbands on, like families. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just pretty nice. Yeah, like it, it, it's. I prefer my culture's funeral more than yours. I did I too. I did too. I prefer their culture uh, better. I, I like it. So, like I said, it's it's really really different. Raising your kids in an interracial um, interracial uh, marriage is different, and it's just about introducing them to the culture. Like regardless, like it's nice. You know, it's really nice. And I think that's all. Like, there's not really much to it. The food, 
the language, um, the culture, the family, and it's just about just submerging your kids in it. You know what I mean? Submerge them and you'll see that they will not sink, they will swim. <laughs> and they will have fun with it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I don't think there's anything else. Like, you know, just that's pretty much it. Yeah, joy and simple things mm -hmm. which family brings to the table. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it might be a little bit different and strange, but I mean, at the end of the all, like my mom, my dad do we love. Mm -hmm. And then your size family do with love, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's not because they're just don't care, or it's not because they're strange or weird or freaks, you know what I mean? But it's all done with love, so yeah. so that's that's the most important part, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So yeah, so we just wanted to just get a hop on here to just if you're in an interracial marriage like we want to hear your stories like what do you how do you deal with it your culture yep. and your kids like language barrier your, yeah your language barrier how mm -hmm. different is that you know what i mean like we want to know you know give us the tea on how you do it because leave us a comment yeah leave us a comment down below if you have any kids if you're in an interracial uh, marriage and or even in an in interracial just like dating i don't know just <laughs> let us know like how do you do it how do you raise your kids and how do you do it so yeah so i hope you like this video don't forget to subscribe our next video is going to be teenage wedding we because we got i got married at 18 years old and yeah. our wedding was a hoot <laughs> I was cringy, guys. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was cringeworthy. You know, yeah. my mom was probably gonna be mad at me by saying that because she helped me plan it. But her part was not cringeworthy. <laughs> when my choices were cringeworthy. Oh, we were young. We were young. So, yeah, that's that's gonna be in our next video. So keep in mind and ring that bell so you can get notified of our crazy teenage wedding. Yeah. And yeah, I hope you like this video. Give us a thumbs up and yeah until next time bye